I'm Dodie Stillman. I'm the president of the Austin Area Beekeepers Association and a member of the TBA board. Today I'm going to talk to you about beeswax. We're going to go from this bucket of honey comb cappings to this cute little bar of beeswax. Before I get to the presentation, I need to thank Barbie Rose for all of her help. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. So when I told my mom that I was going to give a presentation about wax and all the things you can do with it, she was like, where are you going to get it? Where are you going to get all this wax? I'm like, mom, I'm a beekeeper. I know where to get beeswax from. I'm going to go get some from my bees. So hopefully everybody has access to some nice beeswax. You're probably mostly used to getting your wax every year when you collect your honey. So decapping your, your honeycomb so that you can extract your honey. Keep that wax because that's a great resource. You'll also have burr comb. And even every year as you rotate out your older frames, you'll have honey, I mean wax in those frames. Our worker bees actually produce wax from glands in their abdomens. These glands uh, develop and function when the bees are between 12 and 20 days old. And then after that, they atrophy. So there are four things you have to have to get honeycomb. First is the right age bees. There has to be a place to put the honeycomb. It has to be warm enough because bees only make, they don't make honeycomb in the winter. And the fourth thing is the bees have to have a constant supply of either sugar syrup or nectar. A healthy honeybee can produce about eight, eight scales of wax every 12 hours. Bees need to consume about 10 pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. I'm going to say that again. 10 pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. Maybe now you can see why wax is so much more expensive than buying a jar of honey and why it's such a huge resource for our bees to make that wax. Some other beeswax facts are that it takes about a thousand scales to make one gram of beeswax or approximately 500,000 scales to make a pound of wax. The wax comb of one deep weighs about a third of a pound. It takes a lot of resources and energy for our honeybees to produce beeswax. There are a couple of types of beeswax I want to talk to you about. The first one everybody is mostly aware of is when that super is capped off and full of honey that pretty white wax that they cap the honeycomb with. That's from our new untreated honey supers. You'll also have burr comb and older untreated honey supers. There's also cleaned but treated comb. So maybe you have treated your bees for mites and this was a frame that was inside the hive when you were treating it. There's also old brood um, treated comb or even dirty dark comb. You should be rotating your frames out every year. So those old frames of honeycomb, there's something you can do with that wax also. Here's the, the uh, scrapings from our, from our cappings. And you can also get it from our burr comb. Remember, you know our bees, they don't like that plastic foundation. So sometimes they build up off the top of it and you can scrape all that off. They have to do it right. There's also the burr comb in between boxes sometimes. Um, and the old comb from your old frames. The most important thing is not to mix your waxes. Melt these all in separate batches. Don't mess up that pretty wax over here on the left side with this dark, bold brood comb that's full of cocoons. Keep them separated. So how do we go from the frame to the block? 
there are two different methods that I'm going to talk to you about. One is the solar wax melter method, and the other is a crock pot or double boiler method. So for the solar wax melter, decide on your container. I have a styrofoam uh, ice chest that I like, but if you don't have an ice chest, a hive body box will do the trick. You'll just need to get a really in inexpensive roaster pan, aluminum pan to lay down inside. I also have to have a block of wood for support and I'll show you in a second how that plays. The next thing you need is enough water to completely cover the bottom of your container. You don't want your wax to melt through and then stick to the bottom. So if it hits water, it'll float and then it won't stick anywhere. So make sure there's enough water to cover the bottom and maybe an inch or so up. Next thing you have to do is get some hardware cloth. Fold it, cut it and fold it to fit inside your container. So you can see on my hardware cloth, it's the right size and then I've bent the edges 90 degrees to kind of form feet. It fits right inside of my ice chest perfectly. And that's where my little block of wood comes in as support. It's the right, it's the exact same height as the bend in my hardware cloth. The next thing you do is add one layer of paper towels on top of your hardware cloth. Then we're gonna add the honeycomb capping. Remember, we're doing separate meltings for each different types of comb of wax that we have. We don't want to mix. All right. The next thing you need is a top for your container. Um, it needs to be a piece of glass. So I went to Goodwill, found a picture frame that was big enough to fit over my ice chest. I think it was like $3.99. So go get yourself an inexpensive piece of glass from Goodwill and that can be your top. Monitor your solar melter all day long because it's going to take a while for it to melt but it has to stay in the sun. You can see here on the left that the shadows were creeping in so I had to move my, my melter set up to the other side of my driveway. So monitor throughout the day and eventually all of the wax is going to melt. You're going to remove the paper towels from the hardware cloth really carefully. You're going to do it right off the bat when you take the glass off while it's still nice and warm and it, it should just pick up pretty easy. Save those paper towels because they make excellent smoker starters. Okay, so your wax is going to be floating on the water inside of your container. Look, isn't that pretty? Yay! All right, the other method is our double boiler or crock pot. So again, make sure that you do separate meltings for your different types of wax. Bundle your wax cappings or your, your comb into different pieces of cheesecloth and drop that bundle into the top of your double boiler or your crock pot. Make sure that either one of them, both of them have water. And then when the wax starts to really melt and it's all good and watery, then you can pick up your cheesecloth and let it drip. If you want to, if you have the tool, you can squash it together and let it drip. Don't be tempted to use your fingers though because this melted wax is hot and it will burn your fingers. So make sure you use a tool or just let it drip on its own. After several hours or actually you should wait overnight, the wax is going to cool and then you can remove it from the pot. Um, don't shove around the edges with a butter knife. You can just bang on one side of the wax puck and it'll unbalance and pop up. Okay, so it might take a little bit of prying, but you should be able to get it out of your pot. When you do get it out, you're gonna notice that the bottom side is really got a bunch of dirt on it. 
So you're gonna use a knife to scrape that off. Don't pour the water from the pot down the sink and don't put any of these scrapings down the sink. Make sure they get into the trash can. Then you're just gonna continue repeating this process using finer cloth each time. So I've used a sheet, an old white sheet, um, as my final step to catch the last little pieces of dirt from my wax. Then you can even reuse this sheet again as a good fire starter. You're going to just repeat the process using finer cloth each time. And eventually when you get down to the color of wax that you want, as, as clean as you can get it, then you pour it into your molds and you have your pretty wax blocks. All right, now we're gonna talk about ways to use beeswax. Remember we had our three different types of beeswax, the new burr comb, the cleaned but treated comb, and the old nasty dirty comb. So just as we have these three different layers, we don't wanna put anything that's old and gross on your face or, or your body. So that wax is only the brand new stuff, that clean, white, pretty wax. That's what goes on your, in your lip balms and as your hand lotions. The next layer down where you have the treated comb, that's where you have candles, uh, vintage wood polish. You can waterproof your matches. Uh, you can use it for leather treatments. Then finally, the last old, dirty, nasty comb, that's what you can use to lubricate squeaky drawers with. Um, you can use it in art for encaustic paintings or in batik. And it's also waterproof, so you can use it as marine quality putty. So why do we use beeswax? Because it, is, it does create a natural barrier that helps to seal in moisture or seal out moisture. Remember, honey doesn't, you don't want the honey, you don't want any moisture in your honey. It offers anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antifungal benefits. It provides protection against environmental, environmental irritants and allergens. Beeswax has vitamin A in it, which helps improve hydration and promotes cell regeneration. And it is a beneficial thickener of liquid oils. Some tips while you're playing with your beeswax. Use gloves. <laughs> use pot holders because it's hot. Put an apron on because once you splash wax on your shirt, your shirt's stained forever. Use an infrared thermometer gun so that you can just point at the pot and know how hot it is instead of having to mess up an actual candy thermometer. Prepare molds and materials ahead of time so that you're not grabbing for stuff and um, like don't have all of your materials ready when you need them. And once you've used your double boiler or your crock pot or your glass measuring cups for wax, you can't really put food in them again. So once they're, once they're being used for wax, they're always gonna be used for wax. Just make yourself a whole second set of utensils just for playing with your wax. So, some um, cautionary items I need to tell you about. You should never leave wax melting on a burner. Don't leave it. Stay in there while it's working. Beeswax melts between 144 and 147 degrees, and then it's gonna change color at 185. So make sure that you stop it before it gets too hot. You don't want your pretty white wax to turn brown. The flash point of beeswax is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it will burst into flames. Hopefully you will never get it up to 400 degrees, um, but it will burst into flame at that hot. So keep a fire, hand, a fire extinguisher handy, just to be safe. Um, use electric heat if you can, instead of an open flame because wax is flammable. So keep it away from those open flames and Melted wax is hot. It can burn your skin if it is spilled or if you touch it. It is hot, 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 hot. So here are a few different 
beeswax to coconut oil ratios to help you with creating different types of items. So for example, if you use one-to-one -one beeswax and coconut oil, the firmness is gonna be very hard, or the hardness will be very firm. It's gonna be slow to melt, and it makes the perfect lip balm ratio. If you do your beeswax to, to coconut oil at a one to three ratio, it's gonna be medium to soft. It's gonna melt fast, and it's the perfect thing for a lotion bar because it's not very sticky. If you do a one to six ratio of beeswax to coconut oil, it's gonna be very soft. It's going to melt fast on your fingertips and um, it's going to be a good thing to use for lotion. So now we'll talk about a few projects you can use. You can do with your brand new wax cappings and your clean bur comb. So here's the basic lip balm recipe. It's equal parts beeswax and coconut oil and then candy flavoring oil. Make sure it's oil and not anything else. Honey won't work. Honey stays honey in all of this oil. So I've tried this. Lots of people I think try it. Doesn't work very well. Um, what you do is you melt your beeswax and your coconut oil together. You remove it from the heat. Don't let it get too hot or else it'll change colors on you. You add your flavoring oils and then you carefully pour them into prepared tubes or tubs or little pots. Let it cool and harden completely before you uh, start to use it. You're gonna wanna experiment with your ingredients. Um, you're gonna want to add different flavorings, exactly how much. So if you don't think you have enough, if you don't totally love it, then you can melt it all down again and change it. But keep really good notes so that you know how to repeat your recipe. The basic lotion bar recipe uses one third cup of beeswax and one cup of coconut oil. All right, and then essential oil. Again, you're gonna melt your beeswax and your coconut oil in your double boiler. Remove it from heat as soon as the beeswax is melted because you don't, again, you don't want it to discolor. Add your essential oils and carefully pour into prepared molds. You're gonna let it cool, let it harden. It's gonna be overnight again. It's hard not to touch it, but try not to. Unmold them in the next morning and they're gonna be great. If they're not great, you can melt them again and do the whole process over again. If you're playing with them and you decide that they're too soft, then you need to add a little bit more beeswax. If you feel like they're too hard, add a little bit more coconut oil. Okay, another thing is if you can't get your molds out, try putting them in the deep freeze for a few minutes and that will shrink it down uh, just a tiny bit, hopefully enough that it will pop right out of your mold. Another favorite of mine is sea salt scrub. Um, you should make this in very small quantities or make a lot of it and then give it to friends in small quantities um, because you don't want it to go bad and it doesn't take, doesn't taste, doesn't take very much to, um, to make a cute little jar of this stuff. So two teaspoons of beeswax, one cup of whatever oil or butter you wanna use, and two cups of sea salt and essential oils. You melt all of those oils and butters together with your beeswax, remove it from the heat as soon as the beeswax is melted, stir in your sea salt, add your essential oils, and experiment until you love it. Put it into little tiny cute little jars, add a little scoop and you've got the perfect present. All right, let's move on to old burr comb or older untreated wax from your honey supers. So a good thing to use to make with that are reusable food wax wraps. Um, you use a thin cotton piece of fabric that you've washed and cut to the desired sizes and beeswax, you need cookie sheets, um, large pieces of parchment paper, an iron, 
and paper towels. The rosin is something you can use um, that's optional. It will help you to keep your food wrap pliable. So basically what you're gonna do is cut your piece of material, put a piece of parchment paper down on your cookie sheet, and then you're gonna drizzle your hot wax, melted wax on top of your material, put down another sheet of parchment paper, and use an iron on the low setting to rub across and squish the melted wax around on the material. Try to get it all the way out to the edges. And then you should have a, after it dries, after it cools, a lovely little beeswax food wrap. Something you can do with your treated um, clean comb is to make tea lights. Tea lights are so cute. You can put them in walnut shells or cut an orange in half and pull the insides out or a lemon or even a lime. You're gonna use a half a cup of beeswax or just enough wax to fill whatever your container is. You're gonna use the small wicks to make your lights. Tea lights are really pretty. And then you just don't have to worry about, um, if you put them in walnuts, then you don't have that plastic tea light covering out there. They're pretty little walnut shells. All right, next is our old brood or treated or dirty comb. Vintage wood polish, this is awesome. Um, half a cup of beeswax to a half a cup of turpentine spirits. You melt your beeswax and then you slowly pour in your turpentine and you stir it and then you store it in a glass or tin container and let it cool before you use it. All right, you just pull it pour it out with an old cotton cloth rag and rub it on your wood. Perfect polish. If you're going to use this on a table or um, some other surface that you might be eating off of, make sure that you let the um, spirits completely evaporate and then clean it before you use it. And the other thing you can do with your old um, Burr comb, an old dirty comb, is it makes great fire starters. You can wrap it up in uh, Christmas wrapping paper, leftover Christmas wrapping paper. Um, you can add a little bit of sawdust in there or pine shavings. Mix it up with some wax and it will be great. Great little fire starters. Um, that's all I have. Thank you very much.